dear to Chloe. So I'm going to hand it over to her to discuss uh, the legends and the myths and the reality of Tiamat. Chloe. All right. Yeah, it it has been dear to me because of my utter uh, obsession with world myths since very, very young. My uh, Both my parents had great libraries and I read a lot before the age of computers and when computers came out it was like whoa there's lots more and so many of those myths accounts by contactees uh, have tiny bits right but mostly wrong and I knew this in my gut as I was reading them Um, But there is grains of truth to them. So um, I'm happy to talk about this with Shane um, because this is going to, I feel, answer a lot of, uh, well, the, the other abandonment issue. It is the cycle of abuse because there was great wars going on in this galaxy that that came from the cycle of abuse. Um, And it's also to do not just with being separated from source by false gods, but by being torn from a planet that was home to quite a few souls that are here now. And that's, in a way, is is why we've had a repeating theme in a lot of our lives of of abandonment issues. you know, not you know, I was kind of neglected as a kid, and that's kind of a form of abandonment. Being adopted is there's all sorts, but it, it's it's quite a um, a hard thing to deal with. I've I've known many people that I took care of in the hospital that had drug addictions due to abandonment issues that were too hard for them to deal with. That's one choice is to take drugs, and you know, it's like what you were talking about earlier about nature versus nurture, Shane about the pit bull that's bred to be killing wars, warring beast, um, is raised in a kind household. It, it's kind. Um, and also conversely, you know, um, your friend that you mentioned who, you know, managed to make herself whole despite what she went through in her youth with her father. That comes close to my experience as well. So, um so just before you, before you start, Shane, this was about 34 million years ago, if we were to put a, a time approximately on it. 34 million years ago? How many, how, how long ago was no. this? No. Definitely closer to thousands, like, um, what would that have been about the 80,000 year ago, ballpark? 80,000 years mid, ago. Yeah, mid, yeah, um, mid, Atlantis, I guess it was part of um, part of what part of the the war that ended the Atlantean civilization. The uh, the elders, or what I've called the elders when I wrote the blog, are the um, the group that kind of went through all of that and came through the other side. So one of the first things that they had ever kind of instilled in me when it came to that topic was that because of the level of destruction that had happened, with a planet actually being destroyed near us. Um, everyone who came here or everyone who ended up being on the planet once that was all written down came here after the fact and um, they didn't they weren't here during it so a lot of it was a little bit skewed or based on um, a lot of assumption because I mean during a war uh, a lot of different things are going on in different places and you're not present in all of those places so it doesn't matter if you're the general of whichever side you're not going to know every event that occurred Right. So when you're putting all those pieces back together, you're going to and you're writing that history book, you're going to be leaving things out. You're going to be making assumptions. You're going to be filling in gaps with stuff. You don't really know what you're talking about. Yeah. And um, that's kind of what we've got in the myths is they're filling in the gaps. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why the the subject of Tiamat and even the name of it gets so skewed is because they've got many different versions of that myth and. In, in in society, right? Like uh, that are available to people, excluding like you know, 
ancient libraries or excluding um, hidden li- or co- occult libraries. Uh, there's only so much information. It's all very, very conflicting, all very conflicting. Yeah. And it, if, if you try to study it, you end up going around in circles for forever. Like even when it comes to trying to pinpoint when this all occurred, it can <laughs> It, it becomes it becomes nearly almost impossible just on this particular subject and and others as well. So, um, what's the most recent uh, in, in the last twenty years version I mean, of I, uh, everything the Draco have done? <laughs> oh, Star Wars, the Star Wars trilogy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a a representation of kind of an aspect of the war that was going on um, in a fictional sense, obviously, and Hollywood always takes its poetic licenses with anything they, they regurgitate, but um, it kind of shows you how something like that would have, would have, could occur anyways. Yeah. And uh, the destruction that it would have, I mean, you think of like Obi-Wan feeling it, you know, planets and planets away, like a oh. million voices crying out at once, you know, that kind of, that kind of effect or that kind of ripple through the forest occurs, right? It's yeah, a, it's a it's a very very big deal because you're not it's not just all the beings <coughs> on it uh, the planet is a being. Yes. Right. So if you were talking about destroying a planet, we're talking about murdering a planet, and that's a that's a big deal. Like we've heard um, even in the movie Minority Report where they're talking about why the precogs always pick up murders is because like that tears a, a fabric in our reality that's like almost unmendable is the act of murdering something. Right. And that is true. Like anyone who sees that type of energy knows that that's true. You can see places on the world in the world where murders have occurred based on a rip in the fabric that's there. And and exactly. And so um, on that level, if you take it to the Aeon level, which is a planet, then you're dealing with a a tragic trauma that would ripple through the solar system, galaxy, the universe. Yeah. So. It's one of the reasons too why we have so many names for for the planetary being, the Mother Earth. Uh, we have there's Tiamat and Terra and um, Demeter, all those different names. But most people don't. Do you want to get into what? See, Tiamat wasn't actually destroyed. Can I just interject here for one minute? Sure. Because. because uh, Everything uh, to me um, is kind of convoluted. Uh, was so this would be like a multiple question to bring some clarity for the listeners. Was Tiamat and Earth separate? Yes. And, yes. Um, Earth was, was present at the time. A lot of the myths say that Earth was not present. Earth was present at the time, and the planetary being of Earth was called Terra. At the time, what we know now is Earth in the position and place that it is was a planet called Terra. And where our asteroid belt is or somewhere in that vicinity was a planet called Tiamat. What happened when Tiamat was destroyed was various chunks of it went a few different places and formed other bodies that we've recently discovered. Um, discovered. Terra, uh, one of them. And the asteroid belt itself is debris from that. And then another large section of it um, crashed into Terra. And the result of that was almost like a two becoming one in terms of the planetary being. And um, in terms of... uh, (coughs) Galactic consciousness, it's it's a very, very big deal. Uh, it's an incredibly big deal. Um, but one thing I want to kind of stress before I even go any further with any of this is the consciousness that is an aeon, the consciousness that is a planet, has gone through so many different levels of consciousness as we know it and progressed to a point and cho- made a choice that puts it in a position where nothing's going to happen to it that it's not going to allow it is actually going to make a choice on anything that occurs on it. It has absolute control over its own creation. It, however, has a, a perspective that wouldn't make any sense to you or I. Yeah. Because it's, 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 it's a freaking planet. <laughs> it's, not, it's not you or I. So, with that in mind... I'm looking um, down at an ant, right? It, it, yes. It, it, they've... 
there's a perceptual gapping that can only really be glimpsed. You know, it is, it's a hard one to kind of have a perspective of, even in those glimpses, because we see so much damage happening to the planet. But Shane is absolutely right. So TMA so, um, were with Terra. And formed what we now know as Earth. And that's where the, the history and the even the overlap in a memory uh, of ancient times starts to occur because from the level of the soul, the incarnations here have a memory of both. And uh, they have a memory of the occurrence. And we carry that with us because other... That caused one of those points in time where we could either have... Um, survived on our own or we could accept outside help and we accepted outside help in the form of the Draco and therefore we've ended up at their mercy in terms of their control system which has kept us so busy dealing with uh, new traumas that they've inflicted that we haven't even had a chance to look back at that trauma yet and I think that like on a, on a cosmic collective um, consciousness <coughs> level, that's where humanity is at right now, and that's a big, big function of the wave as well to bring this all back and to open up that, that, that uh, starting point for the trauma that we're still enacting, so that hopefully we, we can, we can heal it and we can get better. And even if um, conceptually I were a hundred percent incorrect in in everything that I'm going to say moving forward in terms of what Tiamat is and what has happened to it and all of that, the concept in and of itself all leads towards one thing, and that is understanding that something has happened in our past that is beyond our recollection. It's beyond the recollection of the people who control the rest of the history, and it's beyond the recollection of really anyone who's here. And so it's not something that they can give us back. It's something that we're going to have to go back within in order to remember and pull back out of our soul, ourselves. And the only way we're ever going to do that is by getting through all the other layers that are blocking it, all those other traumas that have occurred since then. Um, if you think about it like a string with a bunch of pins in it, we need to get back to the string on the far left, and there's nine strings in our way. I'm just arbitrarily throwing a number on that. So as we pull out each pin, we get closer and closer and closer to the pin that is actually the problem, which is whatever that cos cosmic disaster was that destroyed that planet and however it happened. Now, I have a, a view of how that happened based on multiple sources, based on a, a memory that I hold within myself. It's based on memory that I've, I've been able to hear from other beings, uh, various different types of groups. Uh, everything that I had learned within the secret society structure is included in my ultimate con conclusion, as well as my relationship with the parents and the elders and their memory of it as well as my own memory of it and other friends that I have had who have memory of it. So with that in mind, um, I don't believe that, you know, I, I think I'm just giving myself a disclaimer here that I don't want you to attach too much to this story and more pay attention to the concepts that it invokes and the solution that it ultimately leads you to, which is that you're going to have to go back through all of those layers of trauma until you find whatever that root is and pull that pin. Yeah, healing a cycle of abuse and knowing that the sacrifice that Tiamat made and merging with Tara was out of unconditional love for the continuance of, of life so that it could continue to experience not the abuse, but to learn how to grow above it, a different choice. Do you think it's a possibility as we, um, I'm just talking in layman's terms here now. Um, they've used Nibiru, and they, and, and there's often reports of it's going to crash into Earth and all that rubbish, um, as perhaps a trigger for the memory. A little bit because the at the time that Tiamat was destroyed, Nibiru was here on its cycle. So it's very easy to say that was the cause, right? It had nothing to do with it, but it, it's very easy to kind of even conclude in a logical sense that that probably had a thing or two to do with it, right? So 
um, a lot of uh, the insider knowledge actually points towards that, that what had happened was it was an occurrence of Nibiru coming through as opposed to po- the, the, the war that they also know happened um, being the cause of it. But um, based on everything I've taken in, uh, the cause was the war, not Nibiru. And when Nibiru comes around, it doesn't have that type of effect because our understanding of gravity is limited. Yeah. So was it a case that the... Um peoples or the beings that were on both planets at the time were they airlifted off or you know because two large objects crashing into into each other would um, pretty much wipe everybody out yeah like I, in some sense in some circumstances yes and um if you're just trying to envision what would happen if one ball blew up next to a bunch of other balls and and all those pieces started flying out in every direction it's um you know at that time i mean we had we had life on other planets near us as well i mean that's where the ancient civilization on on mars that we can see yeah. was from and uh, even the the leftover remains on on the moon itself, um, on the surface of the moon, sorry, um, a lot of the damage that we would, can observe there is also from the same thing because it was in yeah. close proximity to the explosion as well, even if it even if it caused it. Um, so there was so, some evacuations from Tiamat, but mostly yes, yes, yeah. and there was there was evacuations for, from Tiamat. There was uh, evacuations from Terra. There was uh, evacuations from Mars, the moon. Uh, probably Saturn, and uh, a few other places as well. Was Did Mars... Sorry. Was Mars this done by outside beings, or, or did we have the technology ourselves to airlift? Outside beings, yeah. It, uh, I mean, the, the technology was on this planet at the time, so... But at, at this time, this, this planet was a little bit different, right? Like, that was... Um, in, right in the middle of the Atlantean civilization, or even at its pinnacle, so... The coming and going of, of ET species at that time was not unfamiliar to her, and um, therefore, like yeah, there was craft coming and going frequently then. So, did you know, Mars' atmosphere get damaged uh, at that time as well? What was that? Sorry, Mars's atmosphere. Mars was damaged beyond um, sustainable life on its surface at the time. Yeah. So this is where um, Thomas used to, like, I was obsessed with the world myths because of my memories on Tiamat. And Thomas was obsessed with the the biblical water in the sky coming down onto the earth. And the, so the waters were not only Tiamat's oceans. We haven't let you explain or describe how beautiful Tiamat was, but also the water that was on Mars, right? Possibly. Yeah. And the water that was here as well, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, if you want, I'll, I'll read through that thing. Um, I, I've read through it before on a, a different chat, but I don't think a lot of people listening tonight would have heard it. Um, I, I shouldn't say that. I don't know. <laughs> Ignore that statement. Um, anyways. So this is something that I wrote. Uh, we were getting ready at one point in time to discuss this, uh, and I had started gathering a lot of the various sources of information on, on Tiamat at the, that time and, and wrote this based on that feeling that I had at that time. So here it goes. So everything was ancient, balanced. All visitors were welcome and the laws of the land were respected. Perhaps she was simply in the way. A terrible war was raging in the solar system and both sides were desperately trying to gain an upper hand. This is when a horrible threat was made, the destruction of Tiamat. This threat was prepared for. The loaded gun pointed in Tiamat's direction. A hair trigger with a finger resting on it, until someone pushed that finger a little too hard. So much was lost that day. A beautiful shrine of tribute to organic creation was destroyed. Ripped apart from the inside out, the waters fell and the land spiraled outwards in all directions. The salt water of Tiamat fell and mixed with the fresh earth, the fresh water of another planet, what we know now as Earth. Following the water was a large piece of Tiamat, falling and becoming a part of this earth. Other pieces fell elsewhere, much less gracefully, 
crashing into planets, moons, and flying out outwards and to be reformed. The most dense collections of debris forming a belt in orbit near where Tiamat once belonged. It is not common for the destructions of planets to occur in this way. This was the equivalent of murder. The occurrence sent ripples across the universe and attracted a great deal of attention. Several beings jumped to action, working throughout the solar system to preserve the life forms and stabilize natural grids before reforming da- damaged celestial bodies in so far as was possible. Much of the, that attention fell on this planet. Earth was assisted by various races and souls and brought back to a natural bl- balance. The creation was beautiful and left to grow. Survivors witnessed, survivors witnessed the arrival of refugees of all the worlds and satellites, as well as Tiamat, to the recently reset planet. And this is where history as we know it begins. What I mean is by that is it was shortly after that that the Draco arrived. All right. I'd like to comment something on that. Um, we had the members will remember... I was um, I kind of gone against Drake when we were talking about refugees and this plays into it because in essence um, a lot of our souls here are refugees and it's important um, I may I, I may kept saying the same thing over and over again how can you be an immigrant or a refugee on your own planet? And th- and this is important for people to grasp. You heard that. Um, uh, it's qu- quite um, a story, a narrative that Chains put forward there about the destruction and the upset that was caused at, of that time. That's latent in uh, most of us. Not all are from here. But this is uh, kind of plays in to what I was getting at when we start talking about we don't want Syrians here, we don't want Mexicans here, we don't want Puerto Ricans here. And then back in the UK, they're talking about they don't want Romanians and they don't want Polish. Just as uh, Shane has um, coined the term, borders and countries are just lines on a piece of paper. We're all people. And um, more people should think of think of it that way. And not um, even use the term refugees or immigrants or illegal alien. Which is a poor reference in itself. I think that's a part of the collective memory that we have to clear is making any differences through races or cultures because even Tiamat was a very cosmopolitan planet. It had a lot of beings that came all over to visit it. It wasn't an upbringing planet like Terra was. And in a way, I think by merging them with you bringing up this point, we are, again, further dealing with um, a collective memory that we need to clear of making any race different um, through the difficult lessons of the abuse cycle, you know, because that's, you know, the bully in the schoolyard, you know, points the finger at the redhead. They're different. This is that level of learning um the fact that Tiamat and Terra merged to become Gaia Gaia Sophia or whichever name you want to use um kind of speaks to the next level of amazingness that humanity is moving to so it is a very good point that you bring that up about the refugees because we are all refugees and even our soul origins in in itself we're from all over. <laughs> That's why that's being mirrored back to us, actually, in the in the events of what's happening in our world right now. Yeah, because it's it's part of that same, you know, in a big way. It's a it's a mirror of that same drama, 
And, I mean, but uh, it's, it's not just a drama. It's an important lesson if we're to uh, take this to the next level of, of learnings and our experiences here. Absolutely. But we don't need to, to – we can make a choice in an in, in instant to not do it, though. That's the thing, right? Every moment is a new moment to make a new choice. And I think when it comes to this one, it's just we need to make that choice to dig in there and and uh, and pull this out. And um, I mean, it is a narrative, and it 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 can be viewed as a concept. I mean, a very common retelling of the same story is that Nibiru came around and smashed into something and that's why we have the asteroid belt and that's why we have all that catastrophe, right? This isn't much different and the, the end result is still the same. So that's why I said off the top, it doesn't necessarily matter what caused it. We know that it happened. We can see that by observing the effect and the the outcome. Um, I just think that it's it's empowering knowledge for us all to understand that What's what she's putting herself through here by letting us do this damage to her, she's doing with full understanding of the fact that she's doing that for us. That's her service to us. It's her giving us the ability to touch the hot stove and learn for ourselves that it's hot. And it's um she's she's not a victim here. And yeah. it and I think that understanding that and, 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 and being able to hold that in your heart would be a little bit, it should give you, you know, if you ever needed a cheerleader, she's got to be the best one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. But it continued on even after the planet healed and merged the Atlantis, um, uh, tipping the balance into technology away from the, the spiritual clan based culture we had happened and we continue to learn through making those mistakes. But the balance is returning now. Exactly. Now we get to bring it all back to balance and look at it and move on. Yep. Good stuff. Any more questions, Chloe? Or anything else you want to bring up? No, just how much I love you guys, and, and I love everybody in THI. And I'm sorry if I talk loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think we're pretty much near, near the end. Um, anything you'd like to finish on, Shane? Uh, it's want to finish on what I said last <laughs> you know okay. that's uh it, we're we're doing a lot better than we think we are yeah. and and the change is going to occur whether we even like it or not so um the best course of action is to to do do what you need to do for you and um make sure that you're ready for it and allow that to inspire others hopefully we don't end up getting put into a matrix someday. Good. Good stuff. Right. Um, I'd like to say uh, thanks to Shane for giving us uh, his time because uh, his time, uh, like mine, is uh, kind of short. Juggling uh, many uh, acts and uh, parts of the play. And um, I'd like to thank him for his service to humanity. I know what he does. He doesn't always put it out um, for various reasons. So he's performing a very large role for humanity. And um, there's a lot of people who choose to denigrate. And not enough people are given the right plaudits for doing the right things. Um, and it's part of our culture and makeup. We um, often don't give others credit uh, where credit is due because it, uh, sometimes it feels like it's a weakness within ourselves. Um, 
that's something that humanity must end. That um, I've spoken of it often uh, on our shows about competing between ourselves, whether that's mm, better house, better car, better info, better intel, mm, the list is endless. You know, we have to um, work on ourselves, deal with your shadow sides. We keep repeating that. And many of you in THI uh, have done that, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, Then you go out and try and reach the collective. Once we get that collective, as Shane has um, mentioned quite a few times in this show this evening, we can create our own world, our own system, without the need for control, be it Draco or other reptilians or human, human control. Uh, negative human control we can create our own system our own world whereby we gain uh, and self empower ourselves and each other and create a better world and it is it is that simple it's hard in many ways because there's a lot of hard work to be done on uh, an individual level and probably even more hard work on a collective level where we see each other as the same, not hierarchical systems. We don't need hierarchical systems if we're in control of ourselves. We don't necessarily need justice systems if we all behave towards each other. Common natural law, whichever version you choose is better you think and there's a lot of uh, discussions over that uh, some people are arguing it's common law and some are saying it's nat- natural law but at the end of the day if we all took personal responsibility for our lives and the people around us and that merged into a collective we can we can be a force we were the crown of creation and I think we, with the heart, if we put in the hard work, we can return to that. At that point, we then go from a type zero to a type one civilization. At that point, we do not need their control systems. And we can move on for the better of all. So I hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, once again, thanks to Shane for coming on. We'll be back. Um, 